I will come to the aspect of TTP because we've been told that uh, after Taliban took over Kabul post 15th of August, apparently there have been between 70 to 90 Pakistani fatalities along the AFPAC border. But I'll come to that aspect in just a moment. But Colonel Rehmani, now that I have your link back, why did the Afghan army and air force not fight back? You had the weapons. Did you lack the will, sir? Gautam, uh, I think it was not, uh, let's not put the blame on one party. Uh, it was a shared responsibility. Uh, some up to 46 nations were involved in Afghanistan uh, in the last 20 years, including our uh, neighbors and regional allies. So uh, I think it was, uh, this debacle is the result of many failures. It's not just one party. Did America decide, uh, Ambassador Mukhopadhyay, on their own one day that they're pulling out, did not take uh, partners into confidence, or did they realize 20 years, enough is enough, now they're on their way out? In a way, is Pakistan now going to decide Afghanistan's future sooner than later? Um, well, I, you know, the mic, sir. Yeah. Um, I don't think the United States pulled out from one day to another. I think the preparations for this have begun as long as, as far back as when President Obama announced his surge and drawdown. Uh, that was already a sign of preparation. Uh, and I think subsequent to that, even the 2018 you know, meeting between uh, Alice Wells and the Taliban in Doha, that actually set the process for the departure. What was clear is that the United States had decided to withdraw, that it had had enough of the Afghan headache, uh, that it was even willing to sort of cut, you know, cut short uh, the guarantees that it wanted uh, in terms of Al-Qaeda and security and was willing to make actually a fairly loose deal uh, with the Taliban. And it probably also calculated that it had been providing for practically 20 years net security for its principal strategic rivals globally and in the region, that is China, uh, Russia and uh, Iran who all enjoyed, uh, you know, the protection from, the, from radicalism, from extremism, and from the Taliban while the, uh, while the U.S. troops were there. So I think this was something that they decided, and they should have really anticipated the consequences. So I'm not so sure it is just purely accidental what we are seeing, or it is something that they anticipated. Uh, my suspicion is that to some extent, you know, to the extent that they, they projected people like Sirajuddin Haqqani and Anas Haqqani, uh, I think the kind of free pass that they gave to Taliban, you know, the whitewashing of the Taliban into good Taliban and bad Taliban, and the stacking of the decks, both in the battlefield and in the diplomatic table that occurred through the entire Doha process, suggested that in some ways they facilitated and enabled uh, the return of uh, the Taliban to Afghanistan, maybe partly to destabilize precisely their strategic rivals uh, over all these years. So